Yeah, that's what it was when. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah we came like the night before Thanksgiving to swear in. Cool. Trying back in heaven. Oh yeah. Getting yeah. 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 I think it already passed. I thought. Although I saw somebody just posted about write in for the library board. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, he like messaged everybody to remember the spelling of his name or else it's not valid. Wait, who did? Dan. Pat Doherty did too. Oh, I was thinking of Pat Doherty. Dan messaged today that he wants to be rated for the oh. library board. I was not privileged to that. Unless I misread the message. Hold on. No, he messaged me. Oh, he didn't post it, I guess not. It says, feel free to forward to anyone who may be receptive and write my name down in advance because I won't count if it's spelled wrong. Wow. <laughs> Look at his name. Ooh, that's, yeah. that's rough. Holy oh, yeah. Well, you just put Dan B because that's a whole lot. Yeah. <laughs> There's only one. I mean, yeah, but he said nobody's actually on the ballot because two people know are doing We don't have a full ballot here either. We have a couple of unfilled spots. Treasure. Treasure. I agree. Good. That is a really nice community center. I've never been to it, never been. Yeah, we didn't make it to the parks, but he even offered to uh, get a bus. And yeah, yeah, it's right across the street from their town town uh, municipal hall in the police department. Okay, beautiful facility. They uh, they finished it, and then ten days later is when the executive order came out to shut down. Yeah, it's gorgeous though. Madam Clerk, with all these technical ads, I can still see you. <laughs> <laughs> we will call this meeting to order. Please rise for the pledge. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, before we get started, um, I've informed Mr. Meissen and uh, Mr. Haziak knows that because of the Supreme Court decision striking down the governor's executive orders, that um, you cannot participate via Zoom. Uh, there will be no public participation by Zoom. Uh, you have to be in person. Uh, this has caught a lot of communities off guard. I was I, I saw an article today where approximately 20 very city council meetings have been canceled because they were still doing it by Zoom. So unfortunately, you have to abide by the law. With that being said, go please. Here. 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 And I think we're also noticing that because of this plexiglass, that our voices aren't hearing very well. So if you can use your mic, please do, or just speak louder. Approval of agenda. I have one item that I need to add. The information was sent out, and that pertains to the traffic um, pump, bump, 
Um, street tables. Street, what's the formal street, word? Street table. Street tables. Yeah. So we would like to, uh, under new business, add street tables, uh, discussion action. <clears throat> D. D under new business. Yes. D under new business. Are there any others? Um, you know what, actually, I'll add, if I could request to add one under new business, um, and it would be um, the municipal building being closed to the public, just for discussion. And the new business? Yeah. We'll make it E? Yeah, we'll make that E. So, like, municipal hall closure status. The municipal building. Any other? Motion in order. I make a motion to accept the agenda as presented. Support. We probably moved and supported, so we accept the agenda as presented. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Public comment on agenda. Seeing none, approval of minutes from August 11th. September. Yep. Should be September 11th. September 8th. Make a motion to accept the minutes from September 8th, 2020. Support. Then properly move and support it, and we accept the minutes of the September 8th meeting. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Consent agenda. We make a motion that we accept the consent agenda as presented. Support. Remove and support it as we accept the consent agenda as presented. Questions on the motion? Are they still down here at the end? Uh... Yeah, the figures. Are they circle district? Okay. Are the circle district? Yeah. I believe we're. <clears throat> I see that uh, check for four hundred and thirty four thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. The section that was in there for the fire truck, the full time public was forty four thousand. Uh, 
Everybody good? Yeah. Uh, was the motion on the table? Yep. Uh, none supportive. Yeah. Any other question on the motion? Roll, please. Yes. 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 We have a, a lot of bills to pay. First one we're going to take is the uh, change order for the um, street repaving in the amount of $16,901. And that, that's due out of the need for um, repairing a number of catch basins during the uh, reconstruction, particularly on uh, North Brass. I think there was six or seven catch basins on North Brass that need to be rebuilt. So that was a change order. And on, I think, North Bradford and one of the other streets, they had to add a geo drill to hold everything together. So, <clears throat> that's a change order request for North Bradford I mean, for, for the street paving project. Do you want separate motions for each of these? Yes, we should. I make a motion that we approve the contract change order one in the amount of $16,901. And property moves and support it that we approve contract change order number one in the amount of $16,901. Any questions on the motion? Uh, 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 yes, yes. Uh, we knew that there was one obvious bad catch basin in North Bradford, but when they uh, took out the ice ball, they discovered that. They're pretty much all the fixed bases on North Bradford. And they also had to do, uh, North Bradford, when that street was built, we discovered a lot of things that they weren't right. Particularly the uh, drainage of that street. That street was holding the water underneath. And I think that's probably why it uh, failed. Oh yeah, we took out uh, how many inches of asphalt and water was just sitting pretty much. It was just, uh, yeah. That's why I had to sit for so long, right? Because I had to dry out. Just trying to dry it out. <laughs> yeah. So we discovered a few things on that particular street, but we also discovered some other items on pretty much every street. You know, we found something that, ah, eh, okay. Yeah, let's add a, you know, let's do this to make it right. Yeah. So. Any other question on the motion? Go ahead, please. Yes. 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 Pay estimate one in the amount of four hundred seventy-three thousand six hundred six dollars and ninety cents. For the street project. Make a motion to approve pay estimate in one amount of four hundred seventy-three thousand six hundred six dollars and ninety cents. Support. The movement supported that we pay the contractor the amount of four hundred seventy-three dollars, four hundred seventy-three thousand six hundred six dollars and ninety cents. I think overall. Um, outside of the the um, change orders, the project actually came in. I think it was slightly under budget. Yeah. If we the, so the, does the pay estimate one and pay estimate two does that include the change order amount in there? Yeah. yeah. So if I yeah, I, I would support that then because yeah, pay estimate one and pay estimate two. Minus change order one that we just approved yeah. would be 512. Yeah, we actually came in with slightly under budget. Uh, 
Yeah, I think the original was 535. 516, I think it says on the top. I think it's a different number. No, that may be the right number. But yeah, I'm saying it was real close. Surprisingly, it did come in fairly close. What did I say, 533 and 538 on the uh, presentation? Question on the motion. Roll, please. Yes. 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 Pay estimate two in the amount of fifty six thousand one hundred eighty eight dollars and twenty one cents upon completion, total completion. I think we're pretty close to that point right now. This, this is what we hold back. We have to make sure everything is satisfied. Make a motion that we approve the pay estimate too in the amount of $56,188.21 sure. upon completion. Sorry. Sure. The property moved and supported that we pay pay estimate two in the amount of $56,188.21 upon total completion. Questions on the motion? Roll, please. Yes. 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 And, and just so you know that these checks won't be released until we are 100% satisfied. We're not going to uh, say, well, yeah, I'll come back and no, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> you won't get paid until we are satisfied. Item B, the sidewalk we have pay request from Lataria. Uh, the pay estimate one in the amount of $367,071.60 upon completion. The move and supported that we pay Lataria the amount of $367,071.50 upon completion. Questions on the motion? The project are completed. Yes, because on the sidewalk project, there's a lot of information that we have to provide to the county. And until they are 100% satisfied, that way we know we'll get our reimbursement. We are not going to pay the contractor. Yeah, that's fair. Mm -hmm. yeah. Questions on the motion? Roll, please. Yes. 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 Change order one. Is that a is that a um, combination of the September Olin Street and the additional? So that's one number. Okay. Yeah, Olin is in that. Okay. Okay. So it's just change order one in the amount of seven thousand one hundred fifty-six dollars and eighty-nine cents. Yes. And if you recall, we approved we approved the Olin Street um, in the last month, and then we found some additional work that needed to be done. So, 
That's the one change order. When we approved it last month, did we do it as a change order though, or? No, we had an estimate. We approved the work last month yeah. with the estimate. Oh, okay. Now we approved the change order as part of the contract. Yeah. Make a motion that we approve, uh, what is it, uh, change order number one in the amount of $7,156.89. And copy move and support it. So we approve change order one in the amount of $7,156.89. Questions on the motion? Roll, please. Yes. 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 Pay estimate one, contract two, pay estimate one in the amount of $58,419.80. You know, while we say that upon completion, this is really money that we hold back. Uh, so, man, how long do we hold this money back? Until about the percent, we hold a senior of uh, uh, 10%. 10%, yeah. Now, the price didn't have much to do with it, so we're only waiting for the county to give us the advice and say we can raise all the payments. Does this one need to be changed to also say upon completion and county approval? Yes, please. Yeah, I think the motion should, yeah, should be like that. And, and why is this one contract two instead of contract one yeah. pay estimate two? Contract one is the first contract that we got awarded for the grant payment in the county. Okay. Contract two is the additional gap that we added that we didn't want to roll it in the Contract one, which yeah. Yeah. And that was all the stuff we had talked about last month. Yeah, the, the gap that the county wouldn't cover. Right, okay. right. Okay. Yeah. Questions on the motion? Roll, please. Did we? I make a motion that we <laughs> I make a motion that we approve contract two pay estimate one in the amount of fifty eight thousand four hundred nineteen dollars and eighty cents upon completion and approval by Macomb County. Support. And copy move and support it. That we pay pay estimate one in the amount of fifty eight thousand four hundred nineteen dollars and eighty cents upon completion and approval by the county. Any questions on the motion? Roll, please. Yes. 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 Our annual tax overpayment refund to core logic. There's always it is typically a refund that we have to send back to CoreLogic because they've overpaid uh, the homeowners' property taxes or underpaid them or you know, whatever it all works out to be. Um, and so we need to refund the CoreLogic in the amount of $4,741.27. And I'm sorry, I, 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 re I vaguely remember this from years past, but it's always just once a year. Yeah, once a year. It, what, it, what's CoreLogic or, or what's the? They're a, a, a company that takes care of uh, mortgages, uh, what do you call it? Um, oh, an escrow. escrow. Okay. Yeah, they handle escrow accounts. Okay. So we typically do a huge check from CoreLogic. Yeah. Of all the, and then once you all, and once it's all go through the tax tribunal and all the other things that come into play, Typically, we have to give them something back. Is this, is this common for an escrow? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm seeing the nods, and yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's not unique to our situation in the no, village or anything no, like that. No, no. The one good thing about them is that because they cover so many mortgages, we typically get one huge check from them instead of 900 checks from you know, different places. Right. Yeah. So. So that's the amount that we need to refund the core logic. We make a motion that we approve the tax overpayment refund to core logic in the amount of $4,741.27. Support. 
in property movement supported that we refund the total ledger the amount of $4,741.27. Any questions on the motion? Roll, please. Yes. 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 Catch Basin Rebuild. We would like to continue um, our program of rebuilding catch, dis catch basins before they totally fail and they um, underclass the roadways. So we didn't want to take on any other projects while the streets were being done and the sidewalks were being done. Now that all those are pretty much completed, we would like to get uh, our contractor back in and take on some additional catch basins that have been identified. Last year, we did approximately 35 catch stations within the uh, village, and we've identified um, another 10 that need to be done. And so we would like to take this project on. The catch stations typically run about $2,000 if they just need a minor repair and a little rebuild here and there. When they totally fail, that price goes up to about five dollars or $6,000. So we'd like to stay ahead of this and take on uh, at least 10 more chest basins before the weather um, turns bad. There's one really bad one right now in front of uh, the old Louis restaurant. We have um, uh, protective fence in around a chest basin because it's that bad. So we need to you know, take on some of these chest basins and see if we can knock them out. If I could, um, if I could suggest one that you probably aren't able to see really easily because there is always a car parked over it, but um, there is one on Decorah Park Boulevard over by River Oaks. You can actually see like the edge of the under the concrete because it's so low. Yeah, those are the ones. That's the type that we want to yeah you know, address now. So, so it's only going to get worse. So what's the pleasure on this? So are we just approving to get a bid for this at this point, or no, are we just going to approve the work? Not to see approve the work. We, we had contract? decided a couple of years ago that uh, the one contractor, help me out with the name, DMJ, DMJ was our contractor of choice. They came in at the low bid then, and their, their work has been just yeah, really good. And so they've held their prices. So to go through the bid process uh, and not more with the other contract and work is like, I would not suggest that. So the that's approximate cost per rebuild. What's the median cost to rebuild a test station? About $2,000. Okay. So should we cap it and then revisit it as the amount builds up? If we do 50 catch bases of 2000 that's a hundred thousand dollars. Do we put a cap on it and then revisit the issue? Or do we just give them a blanket? Well, we're just asking for 10 this year. 10, 10? 10 okay. for the balance of this year. Yeah. So is it? Are the ones that are estimated in here the 10 that you're asking for? Well, yeah, that's what I was just going to ask. That's got a total of 44 free. Um, well, it says there's five that are complete failure and only two, uh, only one that's a partial. Yeah, yeah. That's the problem. We, we wanted. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yep, I'm sorry. I didn't see page two. <laughs> so the 44.3 is truly the amount we're looking for. But would it be better to approve a larger amount now so we're not constantly coming back? Yeah. Oh, okay. So you're looking at it in the figure then? Yeah, the estimate you're giving us is more than what needs repair right now. No. no. Okay. What I'm saying is, should we approve just like estimate like two thousand? Should we approve an amount for let's say twenty? So we're not constantly coming back. You see what I'm saying? So she's saying if the estimate's at forty four three, maybe we should like give them leeway to fifty. Yeah. Well, let's round it up to fifty. And then but it's only going to be then these ten catch bases. Fifteen. Right, but there's still yes. if, if something else 
you want to do 15. 15, I'm sorry. It's 15, not 10. 15, yeah. 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 Okay. We're going to be able to get all those done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 10 partial failures, six, right. five complete failures. Right, exactly. Yeah. 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 And I see that the one I was mentioning is on page two. <laughs> you guys are on top of it. So then just motions in order for the, the amount not to exceed 50,000? Yeah. Yeah, I would okay. put it a little bit in there. But they typically come in. Right, because the wiggle room is really just if any of these partial failures turn out to be more work. Yeah. yeah. So the motion then table? No, I, oh. I'll make a motion to approve the um, the repairs to the 15 catch basins, not to exceed $50,000. Okay, see you, Jason, I think. The property move and support it, that we approve up to, that we approve up to $50,000 for the catch basin work for the 15 listed. Any questions on the motion? No, please. Yes. 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 Item F. Fire department request purchase vehicle. Who's coming up? Sorry, just to, um, for my own sake, what's the difference between what you guys intend to use the Tahoe for compared to the SUV you guys have now? It's the So is the current SUV that one's being retired or? It is going to be retired. Okay. Does the 
the um the equipment it doesn't include the graphics so that would be the graphics i think they're running again they can't give me any quote you know that's it yeah she sure. said she can she can estimate me it is called how long okay. and she was that's that's actually on the contract so So as I say, would be you know on top of the final price, we're probably looking at under twenty million. So I think we're, uh, I think we're at there. So sixty grand total. Uh, I think we budgeted sixty five if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Both of you know that. I make a motion that we approve the fire department and their purchase of the 2021. Actually, you know what? I take that back. I'm sorry. I think it would probably be best if I abstain because of my employer being General Motors. Um, that just hit me. So I think it'd probably be best if I abstain from. Not an issue. Yeah. You sure? Yeah. You're not, not on that committee that. that, that. Okay. No, All right. It would be a conflict of interest if you were that directly going to yeah. profit from yeah. the sale of the like yeah. if you were okay. the salesperson. I, I think it's fine. Okay. <laughs> If that's a, if, okay. if it's okay, <laughs> we all just had that last it. minute. Whoops. All right. So I will re motion for the uh, approval of the New Haven Fire Department to purchase the 2021 Chevrolet Tahoe um, in the amount of the uh, 40,577. Support. Better safe than sorry. <laughs> you can probably move and support it that we authorize the fire department to purchase a new Tahoe in the amount of forty thousand five hundred and seventy seven dollars. Any questions on the motion? I just have a comment. I just want to make sure that when Harry comes aware Yeah, and we got a, a little bit more of an in-depth dive, but not only is it coming out of their reserves, but they have a plan to replenish those reserves and they still have a significant reserve left after buying and outfitting. Yeah. Excellent. Any other questions, comments? Roll, please. Yes. 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 Item D. Hazard pay application. Um, Sandy and I completed this application, got it submitted um, a couple weeks back. Uh, we found out that, I don't know what happened. I guess I, I just don't know what happened. But um, is that the case that I completed July 15th of 40 to 50? Was there something wrong with it? Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 Checks. 
and it's just a five dollar check minus you know all the related right. stuff that goes including our portion of our fight and mm -hmm. whatnot and whatnot so our request tonight is to approve the 18,000. now let me just say while there's no 100 guarantee we're going to be reimbursed there's probably a 99 percent chance we're going to be reimbursed but there's zero chance we wait. Right. Oh, if we hadn't met that <laughs> deadline a few weeks ago. Right. Yeah. It's, yeah. So the the request is approval for the eighteen thousand dollars to, to be paid out uh, um, to the first responders. Make a motion that we approve the payment of eighteen thousand dollars to the uh, first responders. Um, for hazard pay. Support. And properly moved and supported that we approve the pay of $18,000 to the 18 first responders. Any questions on the motion? Mm -hmm. Roll, please. Yes. 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 Halloween. Um, I put this on the agenda because of all the things that are floating around in the world today. And I think we sent out some guidelines that were published by the State Health Department or the CDC. Um, and my only question is, well, we can't prevent Halloween from happening. Is The question is, do we want to sanction Halloween? Okay. Well, that way the fire department's on duty, the sheriff's department's out there, everybody's out there doing their normal thing. But, you know, I mean, I think it would be best if we were to sanction it and have the fire department and the sheriff's responding as if it was a normal Halloween because it's going to take place. It's going to take place, and it's a Saturday night, and it's going to be. Pretty, pretty packed. So would they not be working? Yeah. No, the fire department typically is out patrolling the streets. Oh, we um, change the budget of budget or whatever. We do have a uh, hard lunch at two that night. Uh, not that we've had any problems. But then usually during Halloween, uh, we're usually good for a couple nights or two out there uh, because of the facilities they have somewhere around here. So uh, typically it's about out on the road somewhere. So it'd be a it was, higher it was staffing. So this is this would be like business as usual for, for, for Halloween. For Halloween. Not business as usual for a for a Thursday night, but business as usual for a Halloween higher staffing and making sure they're in the subdivisions. Oh, so we're approving a higher by sanctioning it. No, 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 because we we set the time and the fire department knows that they're going to be out doing their thing. Uh, because of the unusual circumstances, you know, we can still set the time frame, you know, to pick that from six to eight. But we're also asking the fire department to do what they normally do. Instead of saying, oh, no, I instead of saying we're not having it, yes. just saying we're going to be business as usual, like just like we normally would do. I just question if that's something we need to go through. I think that's just an administrative. We could approve, reinforce the time frame. Six to eight. Six to eight. Six to eight. Which we normally do. Establish the time frame. Yes. Is it normally six to eight? 
Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell who has I was going to say, last, <laughs> last, last, last year, I didn't get home until one. No, no. Approve the time. Approve the time. We don't want to use the word sanction. You know, we know what we're asking to be done. So we don't want to use the word sanction necessarily, but we just want to approve the time of six days for yeah. six days. Well, and I think the main thing too, right, is that we want to make sure that the sheriff's department knows that yeah, we're not explicitly shutting it down. Right. So don't forget about us. Yeah. Right. Is that so maybe a way? Yeah. So we want to make sure that the proper agencies know that we are. We're not not allowing it. Yeah. I make a motion that we expose the public that traditional Halloween trick or treating will be between the hours of six and eight o'clock. So, support. And Kathy Newton supported that we will allow trick or treating between the hours of six to eight p.m. on okay. Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> Saturday. Saturday. Saturday, October 31st. Yeah. Yep. Any questions on the motion? Roll, oh, I'm sorry. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item I, two year placement. As a part of the sidewalk project, we removed, I don't know, 10 trees that were part of the uh, contract. Uh, some were, oh my God, I saw one being removed. I didn't think they were going to be able to take it down. So, there's a number of areas that we're not going to be able to put trees back, particularly on Elk Street, because the trees on Elk Street were pretty much thrown in the ditch. So there's, there's no way, and the houses are so, some of the houses are so close to the sidewalk that there's no front yard. Uh, but there's a couple of areas on um, Haven Ridge where we'd like to put back a couple of trees. Um, a few years back, a number of trees were removed off of Main Street from the uh, division to the library. I think that probably six or eight trees were taken, taken out of that stretch. And so we, we should have been put back a few years back. But we'd like to put some trees back on Main Street. Um, I think we've identified up to 12 locations where we would like to plant uh, some nice maple trees to kind of put trees back where trees need to be. Beautification. You know, and so we got three beds in you know, Marine City Nursery was by far the best per tree cost. They will come out, we will give them a map of the locations, they will come out, plant them, take them, mulch them. Um, and I think we get a one year guarantee. And now's a good time to plant trees. And they mulch them. Yeah. Really, really well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we would like a two way to proceed with this. There's a couple of areas that we're still having second thoughts and kind of through there. And so if it's just up to 12 trees, it may come in uh, less than that. So their, their bid is for seven trees, though. So we should probably take the per unit. Yeah, take right? the per. Yeah. 385 and multiply it by 12. Yeah. <laughs> Since uh, most of the contractors were in that five to ten dollar area. They were, yeah, they were at like seven. Thousand and some, and yeah. this one even at twelve trees comes in at forty six twenty. Yeah, mm -hmm. some of them were really crazy, but Marine City, yeah, um, came in with a real good bid. But I thought it was more in line with what we were looking for. Do they have sales tax or anything, or is that just a flat? I don't, I don't see it in the quote. I don't what? see it in the quote either. But sales even tax, if we, even if we approve up to five thousand. We're yeah. We're oh, right, right. Yeah. yeah, we get right. in trouble if we pay sales we tax. Pay no sales tax. <laughs> Um, I make a motion to approve the um, proposal for Marine City Nursery not to exceed four thousand six hundred and twenty dollars for up to twelve trees. Support. Can copy move and support it. That we accept the bid from Marine City Nursery up to the number mentioned for, for twelve trees. Any questions on the motion? Roll, please. Yes. 
Yes. Yes. Yes. For information, in looking for some other documents, we come across a 2012 resolution that I'm simply sharing with the council. And it pertains to the use of the 47 acres that we've had uh, recent discussions about. And it speaks for itself. And this resolution was adopted back then. Um, if we hadn't been looking for something else, we probably never would have known it, but it had already been designated for recreational use. Is that was a resolution from 2012? From, yep, from uh, 2012. Right, so it's an eight-year-old resolution? Um, I don't know if it has a lifespan or not. Resolutions are temporary. Well, I'm just, no, I'm, just, I'm, just I'm just sharing this with you that yeah. this is what we come across. Okay. Uh, no one sitting around this table was sitting back then, so you know, this resolution uh, existed, um, so I was just sharing it with you. Uh, the CARES Act. The CARES Act money that we received from the state of Michigan was upfront money that we had to spend. Um, as a result of that money, the plexiglass that keeps me safely away from Mr. Meissen <laughs> was purchased. <laughs> And Mr. Alex over here. So, um, behind Mr. Rodick, there's an air purifier. We purchased five, seven? Seven uh, purifiers that run around the clock. The doors are kept closed. There's one on the other side. There's a couple in the fire department. We put one in the DPW office. We put one in the community center. So, the air purifier, they have a uh, um, and that are clean uh, periodically. Uh, assistant Chief Fire Sphere, and he comes in after every meeting the following Wednesday and they wipe down everything. And so this council room will be clean tomorrow. They come in after every meeting because all our meetings are pretty much on Tuesday. So they come in on Wednesdays and we clean everything. But uh, this is some of the stuff that we purchased with that uh, CARES Act money. Is that running right now? No. no oh, no. I was going to say that's super quiet. <laughs> no, it is not super quiet. Oh, okay. <laughs> it, it has a hum to it. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But as soon as this meeting is over with, we'll turn it back on. Yeah. yeah. And uh, what else did we buy? We bought uh, some sprayers, some. Uh, we bought some uh, some sprayers, some uh, stuff that was given to kill. All kinds of stuff, including uh, COVID. They're trying to spray it on. So then they need to wait and see. And there's a letter, and uh, they need to talk to us. We uh, disagree and agree with all the public work. We get on all hard surfaces. Uh, we let it sit there for two minutes, and then everything will go up. And everything's good. So we're going to spend that money over So we spent it. We don't want to send it back, so we spent it. Uh, Adam L. Uh, you guys received the updated paper map. I think they also attached the old one, so if you could compare. Yeah. So the paper map have been updated, which I, I like seeing a lot more green than any other color. Mm -hmm. Do you have any questions on the paper map or, or, or the care map? Item M, the sewer deficit, deficit elimination plan. Um, <laughs> the state of Michigan is funny. They accepted it and rejected it. Or they rejected it and accepted it. They're all in the same brush. Denial with accepted plan. <laughs> so it's, it's we're, we're good. We're, you know, on the right track. And uh, like I said, they've accepted it and then they, you know, yeah. I got a question. I mean, I don't know what it says. Um, we don't have a certified plan in, in Mountain 
It has an effect on us. Does that mean they can't apply the sewer bonds to us? <laughs> that would be nice. Um, you know, we contracted with uh, uh, with the group Brzezinski and company, and they make sure that, that all of our ducks in a row so that when the county goes out for bonding, they supply the information to the county um, on our behalf. So that they make sure that we have all our ducks in a row. So the state of Michigan, I, in all honesty, at one point they tried to withhold some revenue sharing, but a nice letter from uh, from our other attorney, Mr. Kelly, uh, quickly reminded the state of Michigan that the law does not allow them to do that. So they they tried to do their thing, and of course we call them out on it. And so far, we've been winning. <laughs> but no, there's you know we don't bond. We personally don't bond anything. Uh, yes, the county does on our behalf when it comes to sewer projects, but it's never been an issue because it's such a small piece of that pie. Sorry to <coughs> have to belabor this one, but you know, if, if it's if it's past the five-year plan and they're just going to deny it after they accept it anyway, what what's the grounds that we keep submitting new ones year over year? Or updating it. Yeah, it seems like it's just that fifty five report is just for that. So I have to report it and I have to do the comments yeah. for it. It's only the requirement to do that information. So um it's just one of the procedures that they have to follow and you have to follow hmm. the same thing. You just have to make sure that it's like eight years or whatever. Right. So it would be five. But it's something that they they follow their protocol that we have to um yeah. And so we continue to make sure that we do our part so that right. they don't, because they can't use that against us. Right. Is this Levitt's normal once a year event? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. He does when he does the financial budget. Right. And then he does the So just to, to clarify too, because I think I don't know if we were if we had did we have the did we have have the mention before we started the meeting or after, but so with the with the executive orders being shut down with the Supreme Court ruling, right now we're kind of in this weird gray area about utilizing Zoom 
for meetings and all that, right? Okay, well, it's, it's always been my position. Not all of us agree, and I could be wrong on that, but I never quite understood how you were going to have a closed meeting this way. Okay? Because I, I can't know one of the secrets of closed meeting is I give you an opinion, you're all familiar with this, and the public should know this. And you read the opinion, and we can discuss it, whatever, and then you've got to give it back to me because it's never supposed to be out in public. But if I'm doing that by Zoom, I don't know who's sitting next to you or you or you or even who's sitting next to me. So how many people are in that meeting that I don't know about, which destroys the whole reason for an executive session out of closed session. Um, and we have another one that I'm aware of, a member by Zoom, and nobody I represent has held a closed door, you know, a closed session by Zoom. I just don't think it, I don't think there's a way to do it. And, and I don't blame anybody. I know what everybody was trying to get done. I don't think there's a way to do it by Zoom. Well, and I even mean more broadly, even just council meetings in general, not even closed session, but I mean, moving forward until there's a change in the law, do we continue to still? Do this through with the Zoom as an option? I no. I, right now, there is no legal avenue available to any governmental entity in Michigan to hold Zoom meetings. No matter how much people may want to. Now, the legislature is supposed to meet with the governor, but they don't seem to be getting along, and and give you a method to do this again. Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure I, that's going to happen anytime soon. Um, but as of now. This entity, for instance, or certain this entity cannot hold a Zoom meeting uh, as one of your regular meetings or as any meeting, you know, prescribed by law. But what the Supreme Court has ruled, and now it's finally ruled this Friday and Monday morning, is that the order was immediate, there was no waiting for it, and that her orders were illegitimate and therefore would allow villages and townships and cities and even counties and even the Education Department of Michigan, which this court said, to have those meetings was never legitimate. Okay, now, does that mean that everything done under those is illegitimate? That's a good question, although we think that the answer is yes, they are, because no one challenged them. And it was still an emergency. So, from here on out, there's no Zoom meetings until the legislature decides it's a Zoom meeting. That's why I gave an abundance of caution tonight. That if people have planned to attend by Zoom, they can listen. But you can always televise meetings too. Right? Mm -hmm. they, they can listen, they can watch, but they can't participate. But you don't see us having to watch that. We may have seen everything. No, I, I, I don't think the courts are going to say that. I think the courts are going to say that everybody acted in good faith, that no one had challenged it at the time. What were you supposed to do? Because you were under penalty of criminal law if right. you didn't follow the orders. So you had to follow the, the orders of the governor. We'll see. I mean, I can, you know, they, they could always surprise me. They have before, but I think they'll let it happen. What's happened has happened. But if you do it after Friday and Monday, I think it's going to be thrown back out. So going back to Zoom, using it as just a means to broadcast a meeting is fine, but using it to conduct business is not. Yep. Well, if people want to listen in, if you want to make your, your meetings available on Facebook, on Zoom on television, okay? I mean, you have the right to do that. But there'd be no participation unless you're here in the building. Right. And you have to allow people in, right? If you have to allow people in. There's an argument right. now that you got to let them in now. But, you know. but you can't disclose to the public the public order. No, but, but, but we can limit the number of people. Right, but I'm saying yeah. in the past it was, we're going to do it on Zoom, nobody else can win. Yeah. Yeah. As long as we allow people into the room, even if we limit the number, it's still an open meeting. That's right, it's still an open meeting. Okay. And all meetings are held in public, whether they're at the monthly council meeting or community meeting, any type of community meeting, correct? All meetings are open to the public. Okay. You've got you to invite them in. They don't have like to come, but you got to invite them in. Um, you don't mind if uh, Laura's educating us, would it be okay if she gave us a little step back in our operations real quick? And the reason I ask that is that just so we make decisions that affect future council, so maybe we or you want to do that another month. Well, if you, you know what, let me check. <clears throat> if you give me an idea after the meeting, what 
you want to have something to do. Okay. You want to do it all. Okay. Approval of payment of bills. Make a motion that we uh, approve the payment of bills in the amount of $263,721 for October 2020. Okay. Can copy move and support it. That we pay the bills in the amount of $263,721. Any questions on the motion? Roll, please. Yes. 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 Treasury report. Total board trust assets of six million thirty-two thousand two hundred ninety-six dollars and ninety-eight cents. I know the rate of file is going to be reversed as the money. Support. The move and supporting that we remove that we receive and file the treasury report. <coughs> Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Madam Clerk is requesting that November agenda items be received by November 1. Unfinished business, Mr. Mason. All right. So what I have come to find out is that trying to get any information about what other municipalities have done um, relative to our size is quite a challenge. Um, I, we did have the document that I, that I had last week, uh, but frankly, I've, I've reached out to the Michigan Municipal League. I've tried to reach out to other resources. Nobody's been able to give me any information of like, nobody's been keeping track of what, what other municipalities have done for um, hazard pay. Um, so what I'm limited to is just what I can find on Google and, and uh, news articles, which really isn't much. Um, in lieu of the, um, you know, hazard pay application and approval that we made today, um, you know, personally, I guess I would just be in favor with going forward with the original proposal as it was presented to us, which was the $1,000 for the DPW employees and then the um, $2 an hour uh, for the fire department. I've done some research and I've seen other municipalities that um, provided hazard pay not only to DBW, but also clerical, because they're coming in the office. They do have limited contact, but they're keeping the wheels turning, keeping the bills going out, uh, you know, just keeping the village in motion. Um, what I would like to see is at least a $250 hazard pay going to clerical. Um, I'm, how would we, if we approve the thousand dollars per clerical, do you still want to go forward with the? <coughs> um, I was trying to make it easy by just going with what the previous motion was, but um, if we're customizing the motion, um, hopefully it's not going to be taken uh, offensively to the fire department. But if we're already doing the thousand dollars, I mean. I'd be I'd be in favor of doing the one thousand dollars per DPW employee and then the two hundred and fifty clerical. How many clerical work we only have? Three. Three, so that would still be less so than four, but unfortunately the fourth one couldn't start working because of the shit ball. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was really between a rock and a hard place. So it'd be one thousand dollars for DPW because they're going out, you know, out to the funeral uh, or to the cemetery and digging graves and they have a little bit more interaction with the public with water meters and water, you know, water main stuff. We have the clerical who 
I don't know. Are they? I mean, the, the building was closed. So the building was closed, and and in support of them, um, while they were able to work remotely a great deal of the time, they did come in. Yeah. Uh, because they had to physically generate checks and stay in the building department if they had to meet with the say a uh, building permit applicant. You know, so they did come in, and and they they. They did a heck of a job of keeping things going. Yeah, I, I, I commend them every day that they did a good job. Yeah. Or do you want to make it a thousand dollars across the board? Is that kind of where you were going? I, I think it should be fair and equitable at this point. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of people in this community that work in some sort of are not going to receive any type of help, so if we're going to give a lot of things to people, I support that. Motion's in order. The DPW was it three employees? Four. Four. Because we're a man down. So the the fourth man working was the supervisor on a 10, 8, 10, 12 hour shift. And then three clerical. Yep. So seven thousand total. Yep. I make a motion that we approve uh, hazard pay uh, is a stipend for um, Four DPW employees in the amount of one thousand dollars, and three clerical workers in the amount of one thousand dollars for a total of seven thousand dollars. Yes, she's 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 one of those three. Yes. Yes. So Lori, Melissa, and Sandra. Sandy. Okay, so the the fourth person could not start working because of the pandemic. The fourth person could not start working because of the pandemic. Well. Okay, actually, I guess now while we're actually naming off names, what about our building inspector? They, no, they're, they're contract employees. Okay. Yeah. Well, until later. Well, no, I know. You're yeah. right. No, it's still going to No, she, she, she wouldn't. Unfortunately, Lisa was, she, she, she didn't receive unemployment. She was scheduled to start back in April. April, and because of the pandemic, we did not bring her in. So she was on unemployment. But she's been working since June, right? Yes. Right. Still three months? <coughs> So she would give her like $250. I mean, she came in. Yeah. It's doing work. Yeah, it's not well. <laughs> she just really wanted me to sit down and check on that. But major when the high level broke loose. Oh, there wasn't a health in June or July. There was no health in June or July or August. There was a country that we were all mandated to stay home. Right. Yeah. So I think. That, that February, March, April, May. Right. Yeah. I'm getting that Yeah. It was first three or four months later. Yeah. I can see that. Is there a motion on the table? Yeah. So the motion is for a grand total of $7,000 for DPW and three clerical. Any questions on the motion? It's in proper move and support it? No, I need a second. I'm sorry. Where are you at? I don't need that here. <laughs> There's a motion on the table, right? Yeah. Okay. Second. It's been moved and supported that we award hazard pay to our DPW and our office staff in the amount of one thousand dollars each for a total of seven thousand dollars. Are we including the fire department for your students? No, because we did that on that. We did that on under G. Yeah. Any questions on the motion? Roll, please. Yes. 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 Park and rep update. I don't know if uh, Mr. Hagee has sent over anything. 
Email. Yeah, let me see if he sent over anything via email. I do see that he dropped off um, the meeting. Um, I don't have anything via email. Okay. The uh, park and rec is hosting the uh, trunkard seat, uh, tent or seat um, on Saturday. Saturday, um, scarecrow contest, um, cider and donuts, and they're going to decorate tents along the walking path and just be distant, socially distanced and come through and get candy and whatever, scared and the whole bit. So, the parking and rec is holding out, I think it's from 5 to 9, Saturday, at Community Park in Hayden Ridge. I know it was just posted to our village page, so if anybody's not familiar with it, it is out there on the village Facebook page. Uh, planning committee update, Mrs. Bunkhouse. Uh, we will introduce to the new team the photos on the other expansion and we'll continue to work on our master plan. Grant and team do that at a survey for the community. Fire department committee update, Mrs. Ballinger. We um, worked with the fire department to put together the bid. They, um, I know we've already voted on this, but they did bid out some other vehicles as well and gave, this, gave us the pros and cons in terms of their idle um, times. And then um, upcoming business, I did submit the dates for all of the upcoming fire department meetings through Q1 of 2021, and they've been posted. Um, and we've asked the fire department to start working on some long-term goals. Um, specifically, I think we had like two and five year plans um, where they think they'd like to be, what equipment's going to need to be prioritized in terms of replacement. Um, and so that is next on the kind of agenda for moving forward. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Tree table, Mr. Marshall. All right. Uh, so there was some additional literature that was sent out to everybody um, <clears throat> uh, regarding speed tables. So um, speed tables, there's, as everybody's familiar with, there's speed bumps, there's speed humps, and there's speed tables. There might be more. Um, speed bumps are considered the most annoying because you have to come all the way to a complete stop and then gradually go over. Speed humps are supposed to be a little bit more gradual, but still a rounded curve, um, you know, surface that you drive over. Um, and then you have uh, the speed tables or street tables. Um, the speed tables, they're an angle, flat surface, and an angle down. And from, from what I've come to find out is that it's supposed to be safer for um, first responders to drive over. It's less harsh on school buses and their, and their suspensions. Um, it should be good for DPW with the street plows because of the flat surface for a length of, uh, of the street that it's not as hard for the, the plow to like go over and then immediately go back down. It can kind of go up flat and then go back down. Um, and uh, part of the um, documentation that I sent out, I had done, it was, it was through change.org, but it was just a, a method of collecting the signatures. Granted, I did see that some of the signatures in there are not in New Haven or Michigan or maybe even the United States, uh, but there is a vast majority of them that are village New Haven residents. And it's, it's been a chronic complaint with residents. I'm sure everybody here has heard about it, you know, with constant problems with speeders going up and down in the residential areas. And um, what I'd like to propose um, is for the village to trial a street table within a, frankly, I don't care where, but um, the signatures I collected were in Decorah Park. We're a cut through subdivision because of our access from Gratiot and 26 Mile Road. Um, the amount of people that I see who not only speed through the subdivision, but completely blow the stop signs completely. They don't even bother to slow down for it. I'm really hoping that if we can trial a, a speed table there, that it would, we could see some greater effect of a reduction in speed of the of traffic cutting through from uh, 
grass up to 26 miles. Have you already talked to the school about uh, how the buses are going to get around? No, I have not. Ever, all the research that I found says that it, there's no issue with the school suspension or anything like that. But you haven't reached out to the school yet? Not anyway. directly, no. Okay, transportation people? Yeah, no. Okay. Because um, I think I'd, I'd like that before we okay. to get an update from them. Um, and I, I don't see a problem with it, but I'd hate to you know, spend the money and install it, and then the school says, no, you have to remove it. Okay. Well, the school wouldn't have a right to ask us to remove it. Well, it, it, we want to see what it does to the suspension on the bus. Well, and that was that was the idea of doing the trial was that we could then actually see like, you know, do we have any issues with the school bus suspension? Do we have any issues? Maybe we could get Marcus and the DPW to take a plow over it and see, <laughs> not try to damage it, but see if there's any issues with it. Um, that would be a good thing. Right, and you know the the idea is. Um, or the, the speed tables, they're they're like a rubberized, kind of like a mat that goes down and they you basically bolt it into the concrete. Although I don't see us doing it that often, but technically I would think you could actually unbolt it and move it somewhere else if there all of a sudden is a problem in some other area. Um, I don't know if we'd really want to remove and then have these holes from the drill, but you know, um, if we do trial it, maybe we don't trial it on one of the developed roads. We could trial it on one of the side streets that isn't developed. So yeah, well, but then, you, then you're drilling into the road, so maybe we wouldn't want to do that. I'm not really sure how we would want to do the trial. So, Matt, uh, from curb to curb, our streets are, what, 60 feet wide? The road is only 24, and some are uh, and a half. Okay. So, is 24 feet would be a typical? Yeah, you don't want to see that uh, the Okay. No, I'm, I'm just looking at the sizes of these feet, and I see there's one that's 22 and a half feet. Right. I think if we were talking about doing a trial in Decorah Park, we have. Yeah, yeah, River Oaks. Exactly. That's that's exactly the street. Yeah, that's the street. I, I can't count the number of times I've called Macomb County Sheriff's Department and I've even, we've gone so far as we get people's license plates while they're speeding and then call them. What's the price of that 22 foot? It's the only bad part. I don't have any prices on these. Oh my God. I know. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> You can. <laughs> right. Well, and a stop sign is just the same. You can still blow through it. And they do. But I'm just trying. The, the idea of the speed, speed table is that it's supposed to make it uncomfortable enough that you slow down, but that you can still maintain 25 miles an hour. And then I think the blue is really my concern because can we have the mark where these things are at so that we can get a more we have to make an adjustment when we're following the code. Yeah, I mean, maybe, right. Yeah, maybe we put like just those uh, those stakes that they do, the little snow stakes. Yeah. Okay. We actually added more streets um, stop signs there. We had the we at one point had the approval. The stop sign was put up. Um, from my understanding, this was before I lived here, but from my understanding, a resident tore the sign down. <laughs> that sign became a big issue. Yeah, and we've we've always ran into difficulties with trying to add any additional stop signs because you the the, the state police will not allow or Michigan traffic code will not allow a stop sign to be used as a speed control device. Speed humps are, are considered a traffic calming. There was, there was some discussion about that that was on social media earlier today that there's a, an article about Oakland County 
but I'm seeing news articles and everything. I mean, the city of Detroit, most notably, they, they say that they're planning on doing like 45. Well, I don't want to give a number. Uh, it, was a, it was a very large number of speed humps that they're actually going to be installing all over the city of Detroit and residential neighborhoods. Um, the city of Rochester Hills also has a speed hump program where actually residents can actually go out and request speed humps to be installed in their residential streets. The city of Ann Arbor also has a similar program. Um, so, you know, really what I wanted to do is I wanted to bring it up and see what the appetite was of, of you know, is everybody kind of cool to this idea? And if so, we could, you know, I can reach out to one, I thought maybe the other municipalities and see what vendors they've had good success with, because if they're already doing this and they're already utilizing it, they probably already have vetted some of the, the good ones. And then I can come back and, you know, get some prices. I, if, if council agrees with this and is cool with it, I can reach out to the school bus uh, transportation depot and see if what their feelings are just to make sure. I did reach out to uh, fire chief and they were uh, approving of the uh, speed tables, street tables. Did you reach out to the sheriff's department about the red elephant for your neighbor trailer that shows in our trail? I've, I've honestly asked for it at least three times since I've lived in the, in the subdivision and they've never brought it out. Okay. Uh, yeah. 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 Right. Well, and that's the problem is that everybody knows that you can't be ticketed for it. There's a state law that says you can't uh, do a speeding ticket based off of a camera. Oh, I thought you meant in the sub. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I would suggest that you gather. Um, more information like you just suggested, talk to the school, uh, get some prices on this particular. Um, and if you want to reach out to other communities to see how they're being received, then, you know, because we still have time to uh, hopefully make a purchase and get an installation before the snow falls. Okay. But we're not doing Everybody's kind of cool with that? Well, when you go to the community, you should have had me before a while. Yeah. Find out about the durability. Durability, yeah, and I also wanted to see if they get a lot of complaints as a result of it being installed. Then you know who's cheating. Well, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know, it just it it seems like it's always a a. a hot topic when it comes to police presence. And you know, the, the, the worst part is that even if they, we only have what, two, one squad car at any given point, or one two on one, one and a half. So, you know. We don't have a dedicated traffic unit. Yeah, we don't have a dedicated traffic unit and if it's such a low manpower, all they need is one run. Right. So if back up on one run, then we don't have a traffic unit. Yeah. Yeah. Or even if we could request. And granted, I don't think that they that they usually do, but I mean, even if we had in the contract, like, don't sit at the police department, you always need to be out patrolling and doing. I'm not saying that they do, but I don't know. But yeah. They're out, but they typically don't sit in the subway. Right, right. That's part of the problem. You know, the usual main street pavement rates, park. Uh, grass, you know, they don't typically sit in the subdivision. Yeah, I will say though that I did I did call recently about a speeder in our subdivision, provided them the license plate, and I will say to their credit, since I called Macomb County Sheriff's Department, I have not seen that person <laughs> out speeding. So it sounds like they did at least act on it. Um, <laughs> No, no, not that one. Actually, yeah, that's even another point that I didn't even mention was that, you know, what this was actually brought to council prior, but um, just what, la two weeks ago, last mm -hmm. week, we have a habitual speeder that comes through the subdivision and they, they were, um, the back of their truck got pegged and they actually went into a tree. Hmm. Um, although they were not given the ticket because the other person didn't have the right of way, it's pretty 
I mean, it has to be obvious that there was probably speed involved with how much damage was done to the car and the tree. Okay. All right. I will. I will do that. Thank you, everybody. Um, municipal building. No. Oh, okay. This one's me also. Um, so, um, in in lieu of you know the executive orders and the Supreme Court ruling and all that, and also just kind of the the more open nature of of you know society lately um i've been i don't know if everybody else has been but i know i've been fielding a lot of comments or complaints from residents saying you know why is the building still closed why is the building still closed i want to go in and pay my water bill i want to go in and do this i want to go in and do that i totally understand the rationale of limiting the amount of foot traffic in the building for obvious reasons um, but I'm just wondering if we're getting to the point where maybe we do need to consider um, reopening or, or maybe even like a limited in-person period, you know. Yeah, or even or even if it's like you're only open during a certain time period to the public and closed the rest of the day, I don't know. Um, we have a window. And now we do have the funding for additional screening and stuff if we needed it, right? The the ninety nine percent of the public comes in for one reason. Speed of water bill. Mm -hmm. Now I personally think we're probably saving them an additional thirty steps by just dropping in the drop box. Our employees are remaining safe. You know, we could have a thousand people coming here every month and you don't know where they've been, you know, what they've been doing, what they're touching, what they're sneezing, coughing. We can still require face masks though if they come in, right? Uh, yeah, and then. And then with the number of people in the lobby, that must be the damage Yeah, they're doing it, but our lobby is so small that you can almost, you could pretty much have to say one. And you can allow you to use the Atlantic, it's a third. It's from where that picture is to the door. Yeah, that is. It's really small. Them. But they are open, and they allow three people in the lobby at a time. And then, admittedly, everybody that has complained, it has been because of water bills that they want to pay it in person, and they don't. They don't trust dropping it off in the drop box. Well, and, and I don't know what you're saying, Brian, because that's just the same thing. Um, and also, sometimes things happen, and people want an answer to a question, and they're, they're not being. Support, no, but it would at least also protect the public too protect from each other. Yeah. I would support limiting if 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 we would get the support of, of reopening it. I think you know limiting it to only two people at a time. Let's see if we can get some additional um, touch the glass because that's out there is is not considered. Uh, we need to put a second layer in there to because you have that opening. And I mean, the girls are going to be, I will say this, and I will, one employee will probably quit. Yeah. She's that close to retiring, so she's, she's, she's probably going to, because she has an elderly mother that's the case there. She's, but that's, that's here and there. Um, they, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to make anybody feel uncomfortable by any means. Um, I definitely don't want that. Um, I'm just trying to think of how can we accommodate the public because to Tracy's, uh, to um, Trustee Bankowski's point, um, 
you know, we, we have been fielding a lot of complaints as well from, from folks that, you know, they try to call and they never get, nobody picks up or they don't get a call back. And I'm not saying that they're actually right or that it actually happens. I mean, you know, you always hear these complaints yeah. regardless of whether or not it's true. But at least if we had some sort of avenue that they could come in in person, okay. then we'll explore it. Yeah, I mean, or maybe even do we do something with the front entrance to... Oh, right, right. Make it appointment only. I mean, we can't say that we can't. We're, we're, how long are we going to keep it closed? Until a vaccine comes back on the You know, we, we're here for public service. And yes, making an appointment is a great idea. Limiting the amount of people in the lobby. And if the employee feels uncomfortable, I'm sorry. But we need to do that with public service. And we understand these are extraordinary circumstances. Well, but we could also we could also make that that specific employee maybe they don't work the window, right? Yeah. You know, we would have to, but uh, and, you know, maybe we can come up with some way where we could uh, redirect the traffic. Um, do we have them come in like the back door, or and then have like a plexiglass barrier before the bathrooms uh, or something? Let's see if we can. You know, that's the bad thing about this particular building: the layout and the way it flows. Yeah. Right is not really conducive to a lot of people. Yeah. I just, yeah, you know, I just wanted to bring it up since we do have the, that CARES Act funding. I don't know how much we still have left over of it, none. but, oh, none. I mean, that's a particular part. Okay. <laughs> I think okay. there's precedence to both sides. City of Warren is still not opening at all. They, oh, really? they have to mail in even like their property transfer affidavits at this point. Who's that? City of Warren. Yeah. Okay, I'm sure the lobby's a lot bigger than ours. Yeah. yeah, if you look at their building, there's no way they could keep anybody safe. It's too much. It is insanely huge. And, but even smaller ones, Berkeley wasn't for a while. I still don't think they are for a lot of this stuff. I know Lennox has been for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I just wanted to bring it up for, we'll for discussion, consideration. We'll, we'll take a look at it. We'll get everybody together and, and, and just do like a dry run or walk through to see how we could, I don't know, direct traffic to. Yeah. What kind of additional barriers you could come up with? But. I mean, to trust you, Brad Moore's point. I mean, eventually, even even when the vaccine does come out, that doesn't necessarily guarantee that everybody's going to be on board with taking it, or how long is it going to take? And yeah, I totally agree with that. At some point, we got to figure something out. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Call from the floor. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm no, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Call from the floor. Oh, so no hot dogs and chili? No hot dogs and chili? I thought you said there were going to be hot dogs and chili. No, no hot dogs and chili. No Santa at the fire hall. Yeah, so we've scaled it down, but we still have to live. So we've kind of decided that we're still going to have the parade. It's just going to be scaled down. It's going to be, and probably a lot of people won't come. But we started as a tradition, and we're continuing the tradition. We still have to live our lives. We just have to live by the fire hall. So I just wanted to mention that. Call from the floor. Can you just stand up and come up here and say hey? Yep. <laughs> Identify yourself. I am Diana Hoffman. Um, I am owner of the building on Haven Ridge, Hoffman Day One Service. We have been there since 1974. My husband Bob has worked there mechanics there the whole time. Um, we are in the process of getting the building ready to paint on the outside of the building. Uh, there was, it's a cement block building that was built back in the late 30s, early 40s. And there's some things that have to be duct tight tucking and things with the cement block in it. So we started on it last year, power washing it, duct tight, 
and we get almost through we got one section left to do and we get a complaint that we only have until December 21st to go through. I think that's a little bit if you saw us doing it for a whole year, you know what we're doing. And so I'm just here to let you know that you know we've got it's painted now on two sides. We've only got one more little part left to paint, but I still don't think it's fair. I don't think that it was appropriate. I think it was um oh what is that abuse of the senior citizen? I guess you know Bob's almost 80 years old, he's out there doing what he's got. He's out the person that did this drives by and see she's out there doing it by herself. So I'm just letting you know. I'm here and I'm happy. Um anybody wants to have any conversations about the drop the building up there? You call me. You don't call Bob. You call me, I'll set up an appointment to meet you there with Bob. I don't want anybody there talking to him one on one. We have bad nights when that happens. So, any questions for me? Thank you, Diane. Okay. And that's why I'm here too, because it looks like a few of us. I know my name is Drop, and yes, at okay. first I told Lewis, and, okay. and I, I come right back and say, hey. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. I know the code enforcement has made it a habit of saying, Chris said, Chris said. And I'm, I see Bob out there for every day, every week. And and Chris never said, because I see the work that was being done. I saw a young man over here the other day doing the lettering on the day one. So, so I see the progress. So there was no reason for me to send send them over there. And it, it uh, kind of disappoints me that our code enforcement guy um, can't stand on his own two feet. Okay. You know, because I, mean, I also had a complaint on Carl Street that he wrote a ticket to a young lady because there was a little algae on the side of her house, a shaded side, that there was a little algae. And I'm like, I don't think that's what code enforcement's about. Yeah. Yeah. So, so. Get you right, the right, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you know, and I've been knowing well, I've been knowing you and Bob for most of my life. Matter of fact, I bought my first house on your parents. <laughs> so yes. So I've had a conversation with them about your issue and a couple other minor issues that I thought were petty. But just so you know, I come come to me first and I'll yeah. make an appointment. So yeah. don't go with Bob by himself. Like I typically see Bob elsewhere. Yeah. <laughs> well, he makes the run. <laughs> Thank you. Talk on the floor. Talk on the table. Motion in order. Motion to adjourn at 8.45. Thank you.